I got something very special about two weeks ago, and it's been really hard not to open it. I was so busy with a few other things, though, that I didn't have time to do it until now. I'm so excited about this and a little bit nervous, but here goes nothing. All right, and pull this away. Oh, so sick. Getting two and passing one million subscribers here on YouTube was pretty cool. Actually having the plaque though is honestly surreal and I think that I owe it to all of you and to myself to not just hang this thing up on the wall, but instead to put it inside of a paludarium. Till now, this channel has largely included content on terrariums and aquariums. If done properly, both are incredible ways to bring nature indoors. When combined, you end up with the ultimate setup, a paludarium. We've done them plenty of times before, but I figured this was the perfect opportunity to make the first ever gold play button paludarium. This all began with the play button itself. I took measurements and cut down a PVC board to the appropriate dimension. I don't want to ruin the plaque, so I'll use this for now. Anyway, I have a lot of scrap glass from old projects that I'll use to build a tank. This large piece here will be used for the back, which will be my starting point. I went on to line up the bottom piece to calculate for the depth and height of the tank. I used those measurements to cut down the subsequent pieces following the same process as usual. I scored the glass and snapped it down to the appropriate size. After that, I dry fit the tank with tape. I knew it would fit together properly, but this made it much easier to account for an angle on the sides. I cut them out like before. The cut glass is sharp, so it needs buffed out. I wet down the sandpaper first to keep glass particles from going airborne. I sprayed down the pieces afterward to clear away debris. With that addressed, I'll construct the tank for real. I taped along the edges for clean beads of silicone. I wiped off the glass with isopropyl alcohol in these areas to remove oil and debris that could compromise the seal. Then I went on to apply silicone to all of the appropriate surfaces. I pressed the pieces together after that. I also anchored the corners with tape for stability while the silicone cures. I went back and applied a bead to the inside of the tank. I evened it out with my finger. Finally, I removed the tape on the inside and let it sit overnight while the silicone cured. The next day, I removed the anchoring tape. I also scraped off any excess silicone. Since it's a rimless tank, I need to include a self-leveling mat. I secured a piece of neoprene to the bottom accordingly. With the tank good to go, let's move back to the play button. I transferred the details from it onto the PVC. I taped this to the back of the tank. The next feature I'll account for are the waterfalls. I placed a pump in the corner of the tank and made some measurements. I used these to cut out some more glass. I placed scrap PVC on the bottom to elevate these pieces. Then I applied silicone to the edges and secured them to the sides of the tank. As usual, I let the silicone cure prior to moving on. From there, I removed the risers and was left with two identical columns on the sides of the tank. I set it up like this so that I can easily maintain and access the pumps later on. As I said, I also have the play button sketch on the back of the tank, so I know where to place the hardscape elements. And that's what I'll do next. I've got a great selection of lava rock here, ranging from these giant pieces, which might actually be too big for the scape, to small and medium sized pieces, and even these little nuggets. I also want to include some driftwood, and I think that spiderwood would be the perfect one for this tank. It has these thin little twisty branches that I think will complement well with the stone and make for an interesting design. The way I'll scape this, although seemingly complicated, is actually quite simple. It's just a tedious process that requires patience. What I'll do is build up rock walls around the glass columns. I began with the largest flat pieces I could find. 
As such, I can maximize the volume within the enclosure. In doing so, you'll notice that I used other rocks to prop up the larger pieces. I also test fit some driftwood to see how they would complement the unfolding scape. I liked where it was going. Once things really started to unfold, I felt that I could start to secure the stones. To begin, I put dabs of silicone on the contact points of the stones. This works especially well with lava rock because of its porous nature. Silicone is really strong, so I don't need much here, especially since the lava rock is fairly light. Anyway, as I continued fitting and securing pieces together, I added the branches. Instead of using silicone though, I secured them with super glue. I let all of this stabilize for a few hours. I came back and filled in the cracks with expanding foam. This will make things more seamless, but it will also add further rigidity to the structure by locking the pieces together. I let it sit for a few hours once again. From there, I was able to stand the tank upright. It looked pretty awesome and should give you a good idea of where I'm going with this. The foam needs carved though. I mostly pulled out the expanded portions by hand, but I carved a few areas with a blade. Either way, I'm not trying to create anything in particular since the loosely carved look resembles the stones. After doing that, I was in a good position to begin adding the details. First were some branches which I glued in place. I added more stones as well. I placed them along the top of the tank to frame everything in. I went on to fill in the cracks with expanding foam. As usual, I let it cure for a few hours. When I came back, I had to carve out the expanded portions. This tied everything together and completed the base of the background. From there, I was able to add the remainder of the branches as well. I primarily included small accent pieces to accentuate the existing elements. I also hid the excess areas of expanded foam. To do this, I put down some glue and sprinkled on some lava rock dust. I pulverized undesirable stones earlier to make this. Anyway, this technique makes it easy to create a really cohesive look. After that, I added a few more branches, which completed the hardscape. I think it looks incredible as is, but I still need to include the play button. I have a few elements to make that happen. I put double-sided mounting tape onto thin pieces of PVC board. I cleaned off the glass and secured these boards under and beside the prop board. I also drilled a few holes into each piece. Then I swapped it out for the real thing. I used those holes to lock it in with washers. I don't know about you, but I think this looks incredible. I still need to address water though, so let's do that next. The way this will work is that water will be pulled under the rockwork and up through the glass columns. However, I need to add a barrier here to keep substrate from being pulled into the pump. For this, I'll use metolomac. It's coarse enough that it won't get clogged, while also keeping large particles out of the pumps. I secured them both to PVC boards with zip ties. That way I can easily pull them out of the column to service. As for water movement, I have two pumps. I outfitted each with a vinyl tube, and into the tank they went. Here you can see that I left a little extra. I did that so I could properly situate these T-barbs. I drilled a few holes into them earlier to distribute the water over a wider range. As is, they would probably squirt water everywhere, which is not the look I'm going for. To keep this from happening, I wrapped some geotextile fabric around them. This should encourage water to cascade down the rock wall and create a good growing surface for moss. I went on to situate these in the appropriate locations. Now we need some water to check their functionality. I filled it up and turned on the pumps. The flow is actually pretty good without any additional adjustments, so I left it as is. Even so, when I add moss the flow will be even better. I have a medley of java moss, flame moss, and suswasser tong. The combination of the three should make for a great look, especially once they establish in the enclosure. 
Anyway, I placed this blend all over the rocky surfaces in the flow of water. I also wanted to include window frost film on the sides of the tank. This wasn't needed, but makes for a cleaner look. After that, I moved the enclosure over to its final location. Here I could add the remaining elements. First off was a mix of planted tank substrate. I'll very minimally plant this, so only a little was needed. I covered this and the rest of the bottom with black gravel. Then I poured sand over top of this for finer textures. I added more gravel and small lava rocks for variation. I thought it made sense to include more moss down in this area as well. From there, I was able to fill it up once more. Additionally, I wanted to include some more green down in the water feature. A nice selection of cryptocorani seemed like the way to go. I planted them near the hardscape so that the button is still fully visible. Back up into the land area. As always, I had to include Ficus pumila quercifolia in this build. The tiny leaves always complement a scape like this very well. I also had to include some floating plants. I went with a mix of Salvinia minima and duckweed. That wraps up the design and setup of the Paludarium. It looks pretty good, but as always, it will look even better with some inhabitants down in the water column. I already added my dechlorinator and bacteria, so we're good to add them. Since this is a gold play button Paludarium, it only made sense to go with some gold fish. Introducing the gold variety of the White Cloud Mountain Minnow. White clouds are one of my all-time favorite nano fish, and I felt that they would be perfect for this Paludarium. I also have a few Nerite snails of various kinds. Last but not least are some Amano shrimp. There you have it, the play button paludarium. Other than a few scratches on the back piece of glass, I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. Not only is it a unique looking tank, but I think it's a great way to display the gold play button, especially given the nature of this channel. It will also function incredibly well because of all of the surface area on the lava rocks. Not all of them are in the flow of water, but the pieces that are will become a mansion for beneficial bacteria. The plants will also aid in filtration, and when combined with the stones, create a pretty low maintenance setup, especially once it's established. As I said, it only made sense to include goldfish for obvious reasons. White clouds are a very robust and personable fish that are breathtakingly beautiful. And as I said, they're definitely one of my favorites. I felt that I had to include moss and oak leaf creeping fig as well. They've been a huge part of the channel even from the very beginning. And that's all I have for you in this one, my friends. As always, thank you so much for your continued support. And once again, thank you for helping me get to 1 million subscribers here on YouTube. It's been quite a journey, but things are only getting started, and I can't wait to share with you what else I have planned for the rest of this year. Anyway, that's all. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. And until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.